Good afternoon. It happened again. Another deadly hit and run crash in Indianapolis. The 24th so far this year. Metro police are investigating and it happened this morning on the west side. Ariana Chalker shares what we know so far. Police tell us they found the woman struck here on North High School Road. They tell us they found her in the back corner of this large investigation scene here. And as the sun has come up Monday morning, police are still searching for the driver who may have hit her. Just after six Monday morning, Metro Police responded to the intersection of North High School Road and Gateway Drive on a report of a person down. When they arrived, officers found a woman who had been struck by a vehicle. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Scene. Investigators believe the suspect vehicle drove off. This is tragic for that family who's going to be notified at some point later on a loss of life. And it's happened too, all too often this year. This hit and run marks the 24th fatal one this year. Now the department stresses drivers need to pay more attention to the road. Please, if you're involved in this, if it's an accident, just stay on scene. Please, let's get the medical attention to this person. Imagine that's your loved one. Imagine that that's your family member. It could be your mom, your sister, a brother, a father, but stay on scene and get them attention. Police urge anyone with any information or even surveillance video of this crash to reach out to them. You can call them at Crime Stoppers. That's 317 262 tips in Indianapolis. Anna Chalker 13 News. Also today, two parents are grieving the loss of their 18 year old daughter shot and killed in Beach Grove, and they're hoping to help their 15 year old son who they say witnessed it. Matthew Fultz is following that investigation. Beach Grove police tell us that fatal shooting that killed 18 year old Michaela Bauman happened here at the Parkview Apartments in Beach Grove. And I spoke to Michaela's parents outside of their home earlier today off camera. They tell me they're devastated by this news and now they're asking why their daughter was killed. Beach Grove police say the call for the shooting came in shortly after nine Sunday night. Officers found her with a gunshot wound along Riva Ridge Drive, about a mile and a half south from the Parkview Apartments, where police say the shooting happened and around the corner from where she lived. She was rushed to the hospital where she later died. I stopped by her home Monday morning. Her father says the family is heartbroken. He says the family doesn't know what led up to the shooting or why she was at the apartment complex. Her father also tells me Michaela's 15-year-old brother was there when his sister was shot and he's shaken up. At this time, police still have no suspect or motive for the killing. Now, right now, Michaela's parents tell me they are planning for her funeral. In the meantime, they're hoping justice can be served. Anyone with any information on this shooting is asked to give Beach Grove police a call. Reporting in Beach Grove, I'm Matthew Foltz, 13 News. All right, thank you, Matthew. Now to Hurricane Aline and the impact entire communities are feeling some three days later. This afternoon, more than two million people are still without power. And the storm is being blamed for at least 116 deaths. Laura Geary shows us a look at the widespread devastation. It's just really horrifying. It's sad because there's still people there that are really hard to get to. Several communities in Western North Carolina remain virtually isolated Monday, cut off from life-sustaining supplies and medical care, days after Hurricane Helene decimated large parts of the Southeast. There is no uh, commercial or retail water available in our, in our city. The mayor of Weaverville finding a small window of cell phone service Monday morning. His town, like those nearby, in desperate need of things like water, food, fuel, and communications. 6,000 people have responded to a website we have where you can uh, request uh, to be you know, hooked up with your missing family. Many of the missing may be found when wireless service is restored, but a grim reality remains. We've heard accounts of people seeing houses floating down the river with people in them. So we know that that death toll will rise. Hundreds of roads remain closed Monday with damage on a scale that could take years to repair. Historic and beloved towns, lakes, national parks, forever changed. This is a demarcation line. It will be completely different going forward. A message from President Joe Biden Monday. Help is coming. I've directed my team to provide every, every available resource as fast as possible to your communities. But for many storm victims right now, survival is hour by hour. We don't know where we go from here. We don't know where everybody else goes from here. In Charlotte, North Carolina, 
I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. Well, your heart just hurts for them, doesn't it? The devastation yeah. is widespread. So helpless. Well, we know Hoosiers always want to help. Right now, the men and women of Indiana Task Force One are headed for hard hit North Carolina. And that state is dealing with some of the worst damage. Task Force One's mission is to provide search and rescue support and to help out with evacuations. They posted this picture on their Facebook page. They started out in Florida a few days ago, then went into Georgia and are headed today for the Carolinas. And here is why. Look at this. There are many communities in the Blue Ridge Mountains, for example, that are simply cut off by this flooding right here. And so getting supplies and getting the necessities those people need is proven to be really difficult. No power, uh, no fuel or very little, and food is now getting scarce too. There are teams working their way through it, trying to get in, but so far they say this has been a real struggle. And about a third of the deaths from this storm have been in the Carolinas. There are still more than 100 people missing, and teams are working both on the water and in the air to try and find them. And the forecast is not doing them any favors. They could see more rain over the next hmm. few days. Well, we're dealing with problems of our own from Helene, not nearly to that level, of course, but thousands of Hoosiers are still without power today. It's been a frustrating weekend, and it's been going on for three days now. Karen Campbell, live on Indy's West Side. And Karen, can you tell us how things are looking? over there. Hey there, Felicia and Dustin. You know, yeah, we've been here uh, in this neighborhood, which is near Lafayette Road, just uh, north of West 16th Street uh, all afternoon long. Uh, you know, the funny thing is it's it's neighbors on one side of the street had power all along. They never lost power. The problem was on the other side of the street, uh, neighbors have been without power since Friday. Now, here's something that we just noticed. Now, about 10 minutes ago, we noticed that crews have left the scene. They were here, you know, cutting down branches off of power lines all day long. But if you take a look at one of these houses, you see a red light on the front porch. That just came on literally about 60 seconds ago, which it is unclear if they have power restored yet. That's what we are waiting to learn again. Just about 60 seconds ago, that light cut on. But what you're looking at now, this is all of the debris that crews have been cutting down off of these uh, power lines. Now, neighbors tell us this is, of course, uh, doesn't even compare to what things look like uh, Saturday morning when they woke up to see all of this debris uh, in their yard and, and just the branches covering these power lines. It's it was devastating to see and also devastating to hear some of the stories of, of how people uh, have tried to get through just being without power again since Friday. So coming up at five o'clock, uh, you're going to hear from uh, a few neighbors on how they managed uh, to get through three days without power. Some of them uh, very clever in some of the things they did just to survive. Guys, back to mm. you. All right, we know power crews have been working overtime since overnight Friday. Still got some work to do. Karen, we'll see you at five. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. I mean, everybody has experienced a power outage. Yeah. A couple of hours is mm. one thing. Three, Three days, days and counting, yeah. that's a different story. Yeah, and at this hour, uh, Marion County still uh, over 3,000 wow. uh, mm -hmm. without power here. And uh, all a result of that near 70 mile per hour gust uh, that we had through Marion County. So here you go, even over in uh, Dayton, Ohio, still 5,000 there. I'm going to expand this power outage map and you can see the track of Helene. Of course, the strongest wind east and northeast of the center of circulation here. And unfortunately for the folks in the uh, Western Carolinas, I mean, we're still talking hundreds of thousands of people without power here. And this afternoon we had uh, over a million uh, without power from Helene stretches all the way down into Florida and these outages uh, go down to the tip of Florida here. So we talked about power outages and you were seeing those scenes of just devastation in the Carolinas and basically because of the track this was all upsloping wind that just squeezed out nearly two feet of rain in some areas. So catastrophic flooding there. This is the circulation that's left behind. We're still under this canopy of cloud cover for now. We look to the west and northwest. That will be the big player for us coming in tomorrow, and it will bring in a much cooler airflow as we get into Wednesday. For now, we've got 70s across the area. We've got 40s in the forecast for lows, not highs. For lows. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. <laughs>